Hello everybody and thank you for stopping by. This is Rob Riker, your instructor and mentor. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a pretty cool topic. And that topic is, what is storage networking? Now, as we start diving into the details of the topic, we need to lay out an agenda as to what we're gonna be covering. So we're gonna first start off with what is storage? Because we need to understand what exactly storage is and some of the basic details as to how it works. Then we're gonna take a look at what is storage networking? We'll take a look at the different types of storage networkings. Then we'll take a look at the differences between file and block level storage. Now, as we dive into what is storage, we need to understand, well, what it is. And storage is where your files get stored. I mean, it's kind of obvious, right? But that's what it's doing. Now, this could be on hard drives, solid state drives, flash drives, pretty much anything like that. Whenever storage is physically attached to a system, it's referred to as directly attached storage or DAS. So it's gonna be anything that's physically inside your computer. Now, there is no network connectivity needed to reach it. All you need is a physical cable. Usually this is gonna be a SATA cable that physically connects your hard drive to the motherboard. And then you're gonna have some, a storage controller on uh, through the BIOS to do some of its job and stuff like that. Back in the day, you had IDE cables and things like that, and then jumpers for master and slave, but a lot of that stuff has been eliminated with SATA. So that's the common today is SATA, SATA 2, etc., like that. Now, the storage is formatted or wiped clean to make ready for a file system. Now, this is the first time you've used that particular storage. So if you're going to buy a brand new computer, you are, don't have to worry about this because, well, it's already been formatted, the operating system's been installed, everything is good to go. If you go out and you buy a hard drive through you know, an online retailer or you go to, if you're here in the US, I like to go to Best Buy and go buy my hard drives are pr relatively cheap and physically plug them into my computer. Well, when you do that, that's a raw drive. There's nothing, uh, there's no logic uh, built onto the drive for you to be able to actually use it. So it's a raw disk. So you'd have to actually go in there and do a format. The format's gonna go in there and blow any uh, any uh, configuration that's on there away. And then it's going to install a file system. Now a file system is what you use to actually uh, interact with the actual storage capabilities of the drive. So it's gonna be a logical configuration that's placed on to the drive in order for you to interact with the drive. Now. If you're using Microsoft, you would be leveraging NTFS or the new technologies file system. Now, just recently, Microsoft started coming out with a newer file system called ReFS. The only difference between NTFS and ReFS is with NTFS, you are limited up to a 256 terabyte drive. With REFS, you're able to go off to petabyte, large petabyte file ranges, just a larger storage capability. If you're using Linux, you use ext2 now i'm not a mac os guy so i honestly have no idea what mac uses so when we dive into what is storage networking where we're no longer going to be having the the disk physically uh, plugged into our computer this is going to be uh, storage networking is storage that requires a network connection to work now commonly referred to as san or storage area networking so i'm going to use the term san and that's going to be the actual network connectivity between you and whatever is providing you the storage. Now, there are different types of storage networking out there, and the first one is gonna be NFS or the network file system. You have iSCSI or SCSI over IP, and then you have fiber channel. Uh, fiber channel is broken up into a couple of different flavors. You have FCOIP, and then you have FCOE. Now, FCOIP, is fiber channel over IP, FCOE is fiber channel over ethernet. Now, when we talk about the different storage networking types, you first have NFS, network file system. Now this is file level storage. So think of this, and I took a screenshot of a file, um, Windows Explorer, and I attached it there, and I've got a switch, and then you have the uh, disk array on the far right. Now this disk array right here, if you look at it, this right here is gonna be where the file is actually sitting, okay? And then via the network, 
typically through Samba or the uh, SMB or the server messaging block or any other number of uh, capabilities, typically SMB, you're going to be relying on the SMB protocol to translate the data between the JBOD and your computer. Now, I happen to use Windows, Windows 10, and uh, this is a, um, a file that is local or uh, is sitting on this drive out here, okay? So the way that, um, that's basically how this would come in. So it's a file level. So it's uh, different for every use case. In this particular case here, we're looking at it, it's a file no different than if you had a file local to your PC. Now, when we talk about iSCSI, which is SCSI over IP, um, in case you're wondering, SCSI, SCSI, is Small Computer Systems Interconnect. So it's a, it's a storage protocol used and uh, I'm not going to get into the details of how it works, but um, that's basically how it, uh, it's, it's an encapsulation, for, for lack of a better term. Now, this is block level storage. So I've got a couple of servers, and I have a switch, and then I have another JBOD. If you're wondering what JBOD stands for, it's just, it's just a bunch of disks. So this could be a server with you know several hard drives that are grouped together in a RAID array, and then delivered uh, through a, a connection to uh, typically you're gonna have like a, a storage array. You know, it's gonna be a bunch of physical disks that are inserted into this, um, uh, a server for lack of a better term. And then what's gonna happen is on the front end of that, so the, the storage itself, the hard drives are gonna be the back end. We're gonna be actually where the storage is actually held. The front side of that, which you're gonna interact with, is gonna be what they call the storage processor or the SP. The SP is going to tell the storage how it's gonna work, how it's gonna be broken up and things like that. This is where your partitions and your uh, all that type, your volumes, all that type of stuff is going to be determined is through that. Now, normally with J with when you talk about iSCSI, this is going to be delivered as a hard drive. Okay, so unlike NFS, where you would just go through your Windows Explorer or whatever Mac uses, um, you're going to be leveraging Windows Explorer. You're going to go navigate to wherever you got to go, and there there it's going to be. Now. The way that iSCSI works is it is a block level. So basically the hard drives on the right here, the JBOD, whatever storage is being set up over here is going to be delivered to these servers over here on the left. And these servers are going to see the storage as an actual hard drive. No different than if you were to look into your PC, go to my computer and go and see the actual C drive. It's gonna look the exact same way. And then you're going to interact with that disk or that storage the same way. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and jump out of the way. And you're going to see that um, the next one we have is going to be Fiber Channel. So Fiber Channel is much the same way as iSCSI, except for it uses the Fiber Channel protocol. So this means that you need to have dedicated hardware, which is why I have a Fiber Channel switch, which actually, the switch that you see there right here, this is actually a, a Cisco Nexus 5000 series switch, uh, like a 5600 or a 5500 switch, which has the ability of doing fiber channel. So if you have a regular catalyst switch, like a 2960 or 3750X or something along those lines, the catalyst brand of switches does not support uh, fiber channel. It only supports IP communication, which means you can deploy iSCSI over an IP network and it's gonna work all day long. Where Fiber Channel, you need a dedicated hardware like uh, a Nexus 5K or some other uh, Fiber Channel enabled switch in order for it to do its job. And then you need a, um, a JBOD that's got the ability, uh, th that has the, um, the a network adapter that's able to send and receive Fiber Channel frames. Now, the one of the, some of the big differences between file and block level storage, and we need to really understand how this works. As file level storage, the storage is delivered to the endpoint as a file. So again, I bring up that same file, you'll see how this appears. This is gonna be um, NFS. Now, when we look at block level storage, the storage is delivered as a hard drive. The hard drive appears to the endpoint as directly connected, but it's actually on the JBOD, or the just a bunch of disks. The storage is using the SAN for communication to the JBOD. Now, now this allows for distributing storage to several servers at once. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do 
is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you a couple of exam I'm going to show you an example of block level storage. I'm going to be able to show you an example of iSCSI. So here I have one of my servers. This is is this is an ESXi server running in my home network. And what you have here is you have this this ESXi server and I am using iSCSI and you see this QNAP right here. I have four terabytes of storage that I've allocated to this particular device. Now this QNAP is a dedicated storage appliance. It runs, it's an iSCSI uh, target, meaning that it's gonna be uh, sending and receiving the storage. Now, this is a four terabyte hard drive that is not directly plugged into the server. I'm gonna go ahead and show you another server. This is another one that I have running in my home network. This is, you see QNAP here as well. What's cool about this is when you look at all of these guys right here, all these routers and stuff like that that I've got running, what they are is each one of these is a dedicated virtual machine and every one of these virtual machines hard drives are stored on the QNAP. QNAP is again, just a storage appliance that you can use. And now we have the ability to go through and all the communication is going through a small eight port gigabit switch that's connecting all of the servers to the QNAP device in order to go through and provide that storage. So that's basically how this comes into play. So all of the storage you see deployed here is uh, for the virtual machines that are running are on the QNAP. If I was to go to the configuration and go to uh, storage adapters, you're gonna see that I have this iSCSI storage type and you can see the, the QNAP, iSCSI disk and so on and so forth. Now. ESXi, VMware's hypervisor, is actually installed, but it is installed on the data store one. So this data store one here and this data store one here is where the actual ESXi installer is installed to, but the virtual machines, their hard drives are sitting on the QNAP. The reason I did this is in the event that I want to move a VM or relocate it or something like that, I can do so without having to go and do any type of extreme modifications to it. I don't have to power it off and go do anything. Um, I can just, it's there, and I can just move it between the, the servers, and it works really, really well. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how the difference between block-level storage and file-level storage. Block-level delivers it, making it look like it's a hard drive when it really is not. At least it's not directly connected. It's going over some sort of IP network. The IP network, in this case for iSCSI, has to be relatively quick in order for it to work or else you're gonna get very, very slow read-write times and that's gonna be a bad thing for any type of storage networking. Let's go ahead and recap what we discussed. We took a look at what is storage. Then we took a look at what is storage networking. Then we took a look at the different storage networking types and wrapped up with the differences between file and block level storage and even showed you a small variation in the differences between how they work and showed you some of the how they can be applied and so things like that until next time guys thank you so much for stopping by and until next time take it easy jacob hess here thank you guys for viewing the video i hope you really enjoyed it and I'd also like to remind you that if you're truly serious about your career in information technology, be sure to check out our Career Blueprint and Engineer Training Program at www.zerotoengineer.com.